Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namaste so uh, we've been doing a big series on Shiva Purana and we haven't been getting many comments or really only one thoughtful deep comment and uh, you know we we get we get it that you appreciate it but I would like to see more inquiry into some of the deep questions raised by Shiva Purana there are a lot of things in Shiva Purana that need further explanation. And, uh, you know, you should inquire. You should be active. You should be proactive. And uh, let me know. Because I don't know what you don't understand. <laughs> you know, and if I make any assumptions, I, I could insult your intelligence. And I don't want to do that. So... I'm going to pick one topic which is very, very important, which is the identity of Shiva and Aum, Brahman. So we're going to look into not only Shiva Purana, but the Mundaka Upanishad, which is a really wonderful, powerful, amazing, <laughs> profound Upanishad. And uh, because it deals with the four states of consciousness. But before we get to that, first let's look into it. Aum, or Pranava, means an excellent boat to cross the ocean of worldly existence. Pra means of the Prakriti, the world evolved out of it. Navam means Navang Varang, an excellent boat. So together they are pranava. Or it may mean that which leads to salvation. Or it may mean that which leads to new knowledge. After annihilating all actions, it gives the persons who repeat the mantra or worship it fresh knowledge of the pure soul. So here we are in the ocean of material existence. Huh? Stranded <laughs> in the middle of this vast creation. How do we cross over it? How do we get through it? How do we even deal with it? It's so overwhelming. So Aum, the mantra, Aumkar means the, the letter Aum, it has its own symbol, is like a boat, a good boat, that can withstand the upheavals and the waves and storms of this ocean and take us to the other side which is salvation, mukti, moksha. And there's more. This pranava is twofold, subtle and gross. The subtle pranava is a single syllable. The five constituent letters are undifferentiated, aum. The gross pranava is five syllables, where all the syllables are manifest, nama shivaya. So Shiva Purana gives the meaning of Aum, at least the grammatical meaning. And it also ties it in with Shiva. And we'll see in the next couple of slides how that is so. The mere repeater of the mantra Aum certainly attains yogic communion with Shiva. When the body is destroyed, undoubtedly he merges completely in Shiva. O Brahmanas, the five-syllable mantra of Shiva is the gross pranava. It implies the five principles. The japa of the five-syllable mantra shall always be performed along with pranava. A man can achieve everything by means of japa of the five-syllable mantra. And Ishwara himself says, Hence, hereafter, you shall start reciting the mantra Aumkara to acquire knowledge of me it shall quell your false pride as well. I have taught this great auspicious mantra. 
Aumkar came out of my mouth. Originally, it indicates me. It is the indicator, and I am the indicated. Repetition of this mantra is verily my repeated remembrance. This Aung mantra is identical with me. So here we have Shiva directly saying that Aumkara is himself. It's identical with him. Well, what can this mean? Huh? How do we actually implement it in terms of a yogic practice or devotional practice or meditation? So to do that, we have to go into the structure of Aum and analyze the meaning of the different letters and the syllables of the five-syllable mantra, because they are the same. Huh? Aung is one syllable, it's the subtle pranava, and the gross pranava is the Shiva mantra, Aung Nimashivaya. So let's take a look into how that is structured. The glyph or symbol Aung has five parts, A, U, Mm, bindu and Nada. Now, Bindu is a point, a dimensionless point that represents the goddess, and Nada is the subtle sound, the sound of creation that generates the entire universe. So, these five parts of the syllable Aung are illustrated by the five syllables of the Panchakshara Mantra, Na, Ma, Shi, Va, Ya. Now, you're all familiar, or you should be familiar by now, with our chart based on the four states of consciousness. Jagrat, waking consciousness, Svapna, dreaming, Sushupti, deep sleep, and Turiya, the transcendental consciousness. And these are equated with the different darshans or views of reality and the corresponding yogas that are performed to realize these states of consciousness. And those in turn are mapped to the seven chakras and their functions. But here we want to look into the states of consciousness as understood in terms of Aung. So in the Devanagari, and the transliterations of the syllables, we have A, which is equivalent to the syllable Na of the Panchakshara Mantra. We have U, which is equivalent to the syllable Ma. And M, which is equivalent to Shi. And Bindu and Nada, which are equivalent to the syllables Vaya. Aung, Na, Ma, Shi, Vaya. So each of these syllables then represents a state of consciousness. A or Na represents Jagrat, waking consciousness. U or Ma represents Svapna, consciousness, dreaming. M or Shi represents Sushupti. And Shi also represents Shiva directly. And the Bindu and Nada represent the syllables Vaya. The syllable va represents shakti, and ya, va, ya, together represent turiya, the transcendent consciousness. Now, the deities that correspond to these are Brahma, which corresponds to Jagrat, the world. He's the creator of the world, and he's in the Rajaguna, the mode of passion. Vishnu corresponds to Svapna, dream consciousness, and he's in the Sattva Guna, the mode of goodness. Shiva corresponds to Sushupti, deep sleep, and he's in the Tamaguna of destruction. And Brahman corresponds to Turiya, the transcendent consciousness. He's near Guna, without qualities, and his function is eternity. And the, we'll see, uh, the Mundaka Upanishad describes that Brahma and Vishnu are subject to or involved in cause and effect. 
In other words, they can be both the cause and the effect of the different modes of nature. But Shiva is cause only. In other words, nothing affects him. And the simile is given in Shiv Purana that a lion is a beast which can attack others, but none can attack him. And finally, Brahman, whose function is eternity, is causeless. It is neither a cause nor an effect. And we'll get into the meaning of that in subsequent episodes. So this is all described very clearly in the Mundaka Upanishad. The Mundaka Upanishad is very short, only 12 shlokas, but it's extremely important. It's called the Upanishad of Upanishads. <laughs> it's way, way esoteric, and it gives the correspondence between the states of consciousness and the functions of creation, maintenance, destruction of the universe, and how we can realize Brahman and go beyond cause and effect completely and reach that stage which never changes, that fundamental platform of unchanging being, consciousness, and bliss, Satchitananda. This is Brahman. So how we can realize Brahman is described explicitly. And so this is Shiva. If we can realize Shiva, we can realize Brahman. If we can chant this mantra, Aumkar, Namashivaya, then we can realize Shiva, and from Shiva we realize Brahman very easily. So let me read the first shloka of Mundaka Upanishad and then explain a little bit. Harihi Aum. Aum, the word, is all this. The following is a clear explanation of it. All that is past, present, and future is verily Aum. That which is beyond the triple conception of time is also truly Aum. So what does this mean? It means that Aum is the origin, the seed, the root of all creation, and that the three modes, sattva guna, rajaguna, and tamoguna, the trinity of the three demigods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, the creation, maintenance, and sustenance, the various uh, words that describe the different forms in the universe, and actually are used to create them by the demigods who have the power. Um, these are all contained within Aum. So Aum is extremely powerful. It's extremely fundamental. And those who understand it are in a position to actually realize the self, the nature of everything. And just I'd like to close with some quotes from the Shruti, meaning the Vedas and Upanishads, that describe Aum. It is Aum. This Aum is the best support. O Satyakama, Aum is the higher and lower Brahman. Meditate on the self as Aum. This word Aum is Brahman. All this is verily Aum. So these are quoted by Shankaracharya in his commentary on the Mundoka Upanishad. So what is being said here is that Aung is so fundamental that if you realize it, then you realize everything. This is the pinnacle. This is the top of the mountain. Uh, this is the origin of all. And therefore, to realize Aung is to understand everything. So in the next few episodes, we're going to go through some of the explanations in the Mundaka Upanishad and its commentaries, the Karaka and the Bhashya of Gaudapad and Shankaracharya. Gaudapad is Shankaracharya's grand guru, great guru, huh? the guru of his guru. So these are extremely potent and illuminate 
the meaning of Aum as given in Shiva Purana. So please stay tuned. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>